Nobody's perfect, but some people aren't even close. This includes some of the most beloved figures in all of history. They look great at first glance, but a closer look reveals the deeply flawed, kinda terrible people they really were. Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi, probably one of the 10 most peaceful men of all time, had a much bigger problem than the British ruling India. According to Gandhi biographer Jad Adams, Gandhi was actually a sex addict. He even left his dying father's side just to have sex with his wife. He was 15 at the time, she was 16, and the grief of abandoning his father caused him to abandon lustful love forever, kind of. It is time you left. At age 38, he took an official vow of chastity, but regularly tested it in unusual, creeptastic ways. His preferred method was to sleep alongside women while naked. That might sound to you very unchaste, and you'd be right. He was a middle-aged man sleeping in the buff with girls half his age. Sometimes more than one girl at a time, even. You dog! Of course, this behavior wasn't acceptable for anyone else. In his mind, every Indian should practice strict chastity to the point of never marrying. If they must marry, they should never have sex with their spouses. His married followers, meanwhile, were segregated on his compounds, told to never have sex and should take cold baths if they ever feel their mojo rising. That's the real Gandhi. Great for Indian independence, bad for keeping the young women in your life company. Mother Teresa it's borderline blasphemous to criticize Mother Teresa, who became Saint Teresa in 2016. No one did more to help the poor and the sick, right? Well, not quite. According to reports, Mother Teresa's true motives were actually kind of selfish, with less focus on helping people and more on boosting the numbers of her own religion. Right from the very beginning, I wanted to serve the poor purely for the love of God. Mother Teresa's missions rarely actually helped poor, sick people become healthy. In fact, most of these places were dirty, short on doctors, low on food, and largely bereft of painkillers. Nevertheless, Teresa found the suffering beautiful, like it was making the world a better, holier place. We know this because she said it herself. There is something beautiful in seeing the poor accept their lot. To suffer it like Christ's passion, the world gains much from their suffering. Naturally, this didn't apply to Teresa herself, who received ample medical treatment when she needed it. Nothing further, Your Honor. Winston Churchill We all know Winston Churchill for his efforts in fighting the Nazis during World War II. But as it turns out, he was a white supremacist who had way more in common with his enemies than history wants to let on. We are the chosen few. According to Richard Toy's book Churchill's Empire, young Churchill took part in what he called a lot of jolly little wars against barbarous peoples in Africa. He believed Africans were violent against the British not because the Brits were invading their land, but because they had a, quote, strong aboriginal propensity to kill. Later, when he joined Parliament, Churchill advocated more war against minorities, claiming that the Aryan stock is bound to triumph. Of the Kurds who tried to gain independence from Britain, he said, I am strongly in favor of using poisoned gas against uncivilized tribes. It would spread a lively terror. Jolly little wars, a lively terror? Who knew Churchill spoke exactly like a 1980s cartoon villain? so easily disposed of. <laughs> Churchill also wasn't a fan of Gandhi's effort to rid India of British rule, admitting, I hate Indians. They are a beastly people with a beastly religion. He didn't mellow out as he got older either. In 1943, in between rousing speeches about never surrendering, he refused to help India survive a severe famine that ultimately killed around 3 million people. Churchill blamed the Indians, saying it was all their fault for breeding like rabbits. No wonder President Obama didn't want that man's bust in the White House. All of you will be damned. There is no place in heaven for you. Steve Jobs If you own anything Apple aside from an actual Apple, you owe a debt of gratitude to Steve Jobs. That said, he probably shouldn't be put on the lofty pedestal he so often is. He was ruthless. According to the documentary Steve Jobs, The Man in the Machine, Jobs was basically a jerk through and through. He fathered a daughter but denied she was his, so she didn't see him for years. Well, after the paternity test, he then pays for her schooling and upbringing. He also contracted Apple with Chinese factories whose conditions were so bad they drove the workers to exhaustion. Several wound up committing suicide over the breakneck pace they were expected to churn out iPads and iPhones, among other devices. And they run to the press and they tell the press the story about oppression, uh, and it gets written up and they get their 15 minutes of fame. Speaking of the iPhone, a prototype model once went missing and a journalist returned it to Jobs. Rather than be grateful, Jobs instead had the journalist's home raided and his files and computers were all confiscated in the process. 
you can please some of the people some of the time. No word on whether any backup turtlenecks were lifted during the raid. Walt Disney. He created Mickey Mouse. How bad could Walt Disney really be? Plenty bad as it turns out. He was more Wicked Witch than Snow White. As Neil Gabler exposed in his biography, Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination, Walt had a racist side, and not just because he let Song of the South happen. He was reportedly the kind of person to refer to the Seven Dwarves as a N-word pile, which isn't just terrible, it doesn't make any sense. He also used terms like pickaninny in meetings, which was an old-timey and offensive term for black children. Then there was his issue with women. As Ward Kimball, one of Disney's associates, said, he didn't trust women or cats. Keep the faith, sweetheart. In a letter Disney sent a woman named Mary Ford who wanted to work as an animator, he confirmed that suspicion by rejecting her outright simply because of her gender. In a letter he wrote, Women do not do any of the creative work, as that work is performed entirely by young men. For this reason, girls are not considered for the training school. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves appear on the letterhead, almost like they're mocking her for her silly woman chutzpah. Caravaggio. He may have been a highly respected Renaissance artist, but Caravaggio was also a murderer. A 2002 expose revealed why it was that Caravaggio killed a man named Ranuccio Tomasani. It's been long accepted that Caravaggio killed Tomasani in 1606, but most thought it was due to an argument over a tennis match. According to new evidence, however, the issue wasn't Caravaggio being a bad sport, it was a woman, specifically a prostitute. Apparently, Caravaggio had a woman named Felady Melandroni over for a painting session and fell for her. Problem was, Tomassoni was her pimp, and Caravaggio took umbrage to this. He felt inclined to fight for her honor, which meant castrating Tomassoni. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. The problem, as it turned out, was that Caravaggio's steady painting hand wasn't very good at castration and he severed his opponent's femoral artery instead, causing him to bleed out and die. So, there you have it, Caravaggio killed a pimp by slashing an artery when he meant to slash his baby maker. And that's why they never named a Ninja Turtle after him. Hello, cruel world. Aristotle. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle was a wise man for sure, but when it came to women, he was like a lot of other ancient philosophers. A total misogynist who pretty much had zero idea what they were talking about. Philosophize with them. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. <sighs> According to Charlotte Witt's essay, Feminist History of Philosophy, Aristotle held views of women that went beyond typical sexism. In his mind, women were hardly even human beings. At best, they were deformed men. For some reason, he decided that women have fewer teeth than men, rendering them incomplete, which obviously isn't true. And even though they give birth, they contribute only matter and not form to the generation of offspring. In other words, they birth a kid, but only men can shape them into actual human beings. Of course, that can only happen if the child is a man because, in these are his direct words, a woman is perhaps an inferior being. It seems like there was no perhaps about it in his mind, however, because he was just a jerk like that. Shut it down! Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.